The wheels you drive in Cyberpunk 2077 reveal what kind of player you are. A sleek, fast car reveal that the driver has a small penis. Nomad vehicles, dented, beaten up war machines like something out of Mad Max, small penis. The car I drive. The lack of showmanship is pretty self-explanatory. Welcome back to Players, where we explore what makes our games truly our games. Players in Cyberpunk 2077 actually can't customize their cars. Body attachments, color schemes, and dashboard trinkets are all tailored to a different crowd and weaving into the surrounding lore of the world. Speaking of personality, they actually have a talking car, and his name is Delamain. I really don't like him because he looks like the pale guy from Prometheus got into some blueberry fun dip. <laughs> With other vehicles, cars that come from the Badlands are equipped for all-terrain and perfect for players running the Nomad life path. In contrast, cars from the city have probably never seen a sandstorm and their clean coat shows it. Differences like these are shown in vehicles like the Thornton Galena G240 and the Thornton Galena Gecko. Not only is the name an indication of their varying lifestyles, but GamesAtlas.com actually lists the Gecko as a more powerful beast versus the G240 model. 279 more horsepower is housed in that thing, much like I housed Dylan's Burger. The model even has a more Badlands friendly all-wheel drive system versus the G240's front wheel drive. Speaking of drive, sometimes driving in Cyberpunk feels like you're roller skating with mop buckets and the mop buckets are sentient and actively trying to kill you because they took out a life insurance policy under your name. But with the help of the modding community, each vehicle can have a little bit more style and personality when it comes to the mechanics of driving. Hypercars in game are much like their real life counterparts, supercars, in the way that they drive fast like metal bullets of death whose path of destruction is wielded by whatever sick, demented psycho clutches the cold steering wheel. And you can find them for free in underground desert caves. I found the Rayfield Caliburn during my journey in the Badlands in an abandoned crate underground, and I've been using it to murder innocent civilians with light taps of my bumper. Not to worry. I'm okay. If I were to go in-depth about every vehicle in this game, it would probably take weeks. Like seriously, the most expensive purchasable car in the game, the Rayfield Arendite Guinevere, is not only a direct reference to a sword in Witcher 3, but a direct reference to Arthurian legend, and in its introduction, mentions that it was owned by the ambassador of Argentina. This car proves how deep the attention to detail is in this game. But it was also very helpful for the playthrough of my Argentinian diplomat life path. Be sure to follow our page, keep us in your prayers. We're gaming for you, see you soon, the players.